The thrust load meters are designed to measure and compare the axial load on the support roller bearings of rotary kilns and drums. High axial loads are dangerous because they damage the bearings. Therefore, it is important to adjust the support roller so that the axial forces are small and evenly distributed among the support rollers. Due to the slope, the kiln moves downward but is held in place by one or more thrust rollers. The support rollers match the kiln's inclination and thrust downhill as well. The thrust collar, which is part of the bearing, keeps the roller in position. When the rollers are perfectly parallel to the kiln axis, only slight load caused by the roller's weight and the slope is applied to the thrust collar. A gap is visible on the opposite bearing where no axial load is present. In order to properly measure the effects of axial forces, it is necessary to identify the bearing that is subject to the thrust load. This is where the thrust load meter must be installed. Various bearing designs are available on the market, each handling thrust loads at different locations. As previously illustrated, a frequently employed design incorporates a disc-shaped collar attached to the shaft end. Here, the uphill bearing experiences axial load. In some bearings, the thrust collars are mounted close to the roller. In this case, the downhill bearing receives thrust load. If the thrust load is carried by a disc at the center of the shaft, the downhill bearing is also subjected to axial load. In the case of spherical roller bearings, either the uphill or the downhill bearing is fixed. If the uphill bearing is fixed, the upper bearing carries the thrust load. If the downhill bearing is fixed, the lower bearing carries the thrust load. If the rollers are not perfectly parallel to the kiln axis, the kiln rotation will create an axial force. This effect is known as skewing. In this example, as the lower bearing is moved in, the skewing changes the direction of the thrust load and the roller moves up. A gap opens at the previously loaded thrust collar, relieving the upper bearing of any axial force. Negative skewing is not desired, as it applies additional load on the thrust roller. We adjust the roller so that it exerts a light upward force on the kiln. Excessive thrust force damages the bearing. The tires might not run perfectly straight, causing them to wobble a bit. The axial runout causes small fluctuations in the thrust load on the bearings. The loaded bearings tilt slightly, influenced by both stiffness and applied forces. While this effect is small, it can be measured using the thrust load meter. It works like a traditional water level, but with much greater accuracy and a signal output. As previously mentioned, it must be installed on the bearing that is experiencing the thrust load. This model is permanently installed, continuously measuring the tilting. The measured values are typically displayed and trended in the plant's control room, where alarms can be set to warn of potential roller overload. By monitoring other rollers, the skewing can be compared easily. To offer a quick check method without the need for a permanent installation, the Bluetooth version was developed. It is attached by magnets and sends the values to a PC using Bluetooth. Typically two, but up to six thrust load meters can be connected to the PC and measure simultaneously. Changes in skewing are detected immediately. As the axial load is reduced, the bearing housing bends back, which can be observed as a step in the signal. The curve drops as the bearing is no longer axially loaded. To apply a light upward load, the roller must be moved accordingly. A quick method to compare axial loads on the different rollers is by applying soap to the support rollers or the tire. We use a soap block instead of liquid soap or oil or grease. Hard soap is preferred for its short time effect as it wears off quickly. The soap makes the surface slippery, which reduces the effect of skewing and therefore the axial force. On the rollers with high axial load, the soap has a high impact. On a lightly loaded roller, the curve remains relatively unchanged. Comparing the readings from all the rollers gives a good overview of how the axial load is distributed over the support rollers. To reduce the load on the thrust roller and achieve a good balance, each support roller should be subjected to a small axial force. Therefore, the skewing needs to be reduced on highly loaded rollers 
and slightly increased on low loaded rollers. Performing this load balancing will minimize the wear on rollers, tires and bearings and reduce the risk of production loss due to bearing failures.